And thanks everyone for joining um, our first uh, GCI research rounds. Um, so this is our very first session and we're hoping to turn this into a bi-weekly series um, for um, us to continue sharing more that, that's happening um, in the gynecologic cancer research space. So my name is Stephanie. For those who I haven't met before, I'm the research coordinator for the GCI. Um, so we'll just go into some very brief housekeeping. So ma please make sure that your microphones are muted for the duration of the presentation. And, um, you know, please feel free to use the chat function for any questions. And um, we'll have a Q&A session at the very end. Um, and Dr. Lee can, um, you know, answer any of your questions at the end. And I'd also just like to note that this um, presentation is being recorded. And of course, we encourage everyone to stay in touch with the, with the GCI. So I'll pop in the chat our email as well as our social media handles for you to stay up to date on what we're doing and our future research rounds as well. Um, so now I'd just like to introduce uh, Dr. Lee, um, who's the very first presenter of our series. Um, so Dr. Lee today will be presenting a talk titled Drugs Targeting to Tumors in the Peritoneal Cavity. Um, Dr. Lee received his PhD in the pharmaceutical sciences from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. After completing his postdoctoral training at the University of California, he joined the Ontario Institute for Cancer Research and the Leslie Dan Faculty of Pharmacy at the University of Toronto as a principal investigator and assistant professor in 2009. He then relocated to the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of British Columbia in 2014 as an associate professor. Um, and then he was promoted to the Angiotech Professor in Drug Delivery at the faculty in 2019. Um, so his research focuses on developing innovative drug delivery technologies to enhance drug targeting with interests in lipid and polymer-based nanoparticles and pro-drug technologies. Um, so his research program has been supported by federal funding, including CIHR and NSERC, and he is also currently the chair of the faculty's nanomedicine and chemical bio biology research and training program, as well as a co-lead of the targeted drug delivery theme in the Nanomedicine Innovation Network. So thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Lee, and um, I'm looking forward to your presentation. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Uh, can, can everyone hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, thanks so much for this opportunity to share my work with you today. Um, so I, I really apologize for this uh, uh, photo uh, right after lunch, uh, but uh, you are very familiar with uh, peritoneal metastasis uh, if you are working with ovarian cancer. So uh, peritoneal metastasis or PEM can be derived from very diff uh, many different uh, uh, cancers. Ovarian cancer is the major uh, cancer that will spread to the peritoneal cavity. Um, uh, needless to mention that this disease is very aggressive and uh, the standard uh, treatment for this type of advanced cancer is surgery plus chemotherapy but the, the recurrence rate is very high. And for ovarian cancer, uh, especially advanced ovarian cancer, the five-year survival rate is not good. So our lab is very interested in uh, developing new therapeutics using targeted uh, drug delivery technologies uh, to improve treatment of peritoneal metastasis. So I think today, uh, um, I just would like to sort of uh, give you an overview about my, about my career uh, and uh, how I jump into the uh, drug delivery tech uh, research for uh, peritoneal metastasis. Um, it all started with uh, my postdoc training at uh, UC San Diego, and I was working with uh, Stephen Howell at the Moore's Cancer Center, and uh, he's an expert in uh, ovarian cancer research. And he's also uh, the leading physician in clinical trials for um, the phase one clinical trials uh, at, at Moore's Cancer Center. Um, so I was there um, working on uh, translational projects. And uh, one thing that uh, we both interested in was uh, developing uh, new delivery systems to enhance platinum drug delivery to ovarian cancer. 
Um, so so uh, this is my postdoc work. I was working on uh, CD44 targeted drug delivery for ovarian cancer. Um, so uh, I think many of you probably are aware of uh, ovarian cancer actually overexpressed CD44. Um, so this figure just shows uh, the, the uh, human ovarian cancer sample and uh, uh, immune, with the immunostanding of the CD44. Uh, at that time, we also validated uh, our cell lines for CD44 expression. So we can actually uh, separate them into uh, CD44 positive cells and CD44 negative cells. Um, so for CD44 positive cells, uh, you can see here, it's A2780 and OB2008. And for negative one is UCI101. Um, so later on, we just use these cell lines as tools to validate our delivery system. Um, so our idea was pretty simple, uh, pretty simple. Um, basically, we want to develop a delivery system that can target or bind to CD44 overexpress on ovarian cancer cells. And so that we can focus the uh, delivery of cisplatin to those cells. Um, so so the polymer we use is called hyaluronin. It's actually uh, one of the extracellular components um, found in our body. Um, so the structure is shown here. Um, you, you know, the, you can pretty, pretty much see that it's a, a polysaccharide structure. And the reason we are using this polymer to deliver cisplatin um, are uh, two boats. The first, the first one is says uh, hyaluronin is a natural ligand for CD44, uh, so that we can use this polymer to target uh, ovarian cancer cells. Um, second, uh, these polymers actually contain a lot of uh, carboxylate groups that can interact with cisplatin, and uh, um, so we can use this um, polymer or polysaccharide to. Uh, load the cisplatin into the complexes and for targeted delivery. Um, so this cartoon just illustrates how we uh, prepare our system we call high plot. Okay, so this just represents uh, the hyaluronin or the a polysaccharide polymer we are using. It has, again, it has multiple carboxylate groups that can interact with a platinum cisplatin here. Uh, so we know that uh, if you dissolve cisplatin in water, it will, um, it will form aquatic uh, platinum uh, because uh, the water can replace the choroid ligand from the platinum. So same thing is happening here. The carboxylate group can replace chloride, uh, chloride from the, the cisplatin. And in, and, um, in so, resulting in a cross-linking of the polysaccharide by cisplatin. Uh, because of the polymer cross-linking, we actually can get uh, pretty good uh, microparticles after this reaction, and we can perform dialysis to remove those unreacted cisplatin to have a uh, really good loaded cisplatin in this uh, um, hyaluronin-based uh, polymer. Or microparticles. Okay, so uh, what we did is we in instilled uh, high plots and cisplatin, free cisplatin into the peritoneal cavity yeah, of mice and then look at the, um, the, the, the tissue distribution and drug targeting. Um, so what we really want to achieve is having uh, increased the retention of uh, a platinum in the peritoneal fluid. So the drug can have better um, access to the ovarian metastasis. Uh, so as you can see here, the high plot uh, actually produce a quite sustainable level of platinum in the peritoneal fluid compared to cisplatin, which was cleared very quickly from the peritoneal fluid. Of course, uh, delivery to the tumor is also very important. Um, so in here, we are looking at the cisplatin uptake in the uh, tumor A2780, which is the CD44 
for positive to ovarian tumor. Uh, liver, we know uh, the liver likes my, my, um, microparticles a lot. So we want to see if our microparticles also have huge accumulation in the liver. And also, we also look at uh, a kidney, which is uh, the, uh, the, the key tissue or, or the, the, uh, the the, uh, the toxicity tissue we have to look at uh, for cis platins toxicity because cis platins um, dose limiting toxicity is, is nephron toxicity. So we want to avoid kidney accumulation of cis platin. Um, so with cis platin, you don't see a lot of differentiation in terms of drug uptake in these uh, tissues, including tumor, liver, and kidney. But with high blood delivery, you see that uh, the uptake by the tumor was increased by uh, three to five folds compared to the liver and kidney, suggesting our delivery system is able to focus the platinum delivery to the CD44 positive uh, tumors. We also performed, um, we also compared uh, platinum delivery to um, the CD44 negative uh, ovarian cancer and uh, uh, we, we didn't see any inc uh, significant increase. So suggesting indeed high plot is targeting uh, CD44 positive cells. Um, then we quickly look at the, um, the efficacy of our formulation against A27A0 ovarian cancer. Uh, so we introduced A27A0 uh, DS red cells into the peritoneal cavity of mice. And two weeks later, we perform IP therapy of either high blood or cisplatin. And then we continue uh, to monitor the uh, DS red uh, fluorescence in mice and monitor the survival of mice. So uh, this is looking at the tumor progression using the uh, xenogene imaging. Um, so as you can see, uh, Within two weeks, uh, the, the non-treatment group of mice, they actually are, uh, their peritoneal cavity is occupied by the DS red A27A0 uh, ovarian cancer. Uh, with cis platin, you see a significant effect, but with high plot, you see um, uh, almost complete wipe, wipe out of the uh, uh, ovarian cancer in the ca uh, peritoneal cavity. Uh, when we look at the survival, indeed, it corresponds to the uh, imaging results that with high plot treatment, we were able to prolong the animal survival. So that's my uh, um, postdoc training. So when I started my uh, uh, in independent career at uh, OSDR and UBC, um, I'm, I'm still inspired by uh, the word of uh, peritoneal metastasis. So, um, but I'm, I'm also are aware that uh, uh, ovarian cancer um, is very resistant to um, a lot of uh, chemotherapeutic drugs. Um, so I'm, a, I'm at that time we were working on a multi-drug resistant cancer, so-called MDR cancer. And uh, um, that's why we developed this Celex platform to target a, a very unique drug, which I'm gonna introduce in the next slide uh, to ovarian cancer or just a uh, um, general cancer that are overexpressing MDR genes. Um, the drug is called polyphilotoxin, uh, um, short 